Um, can you tell me the story about uh, selling a car to DMX back in 99? Oh yeah, okay. DMX. So, you know, back, that's when I was dealing with Leo Corn. Leo Corn always believed in DMX. As y'all see uh, in the Marine series, what the X, y'all? Of all the chronicles, the stories from No Limit to Rough Riders, Death Row, Murder Was the Case. Which one y'all like the best? I guess the next ones will probably be Rap A Lot, maybe Aftermath, So So Death might be a good one, Rockefeller be a hell of a one. I wonder which one's gonna be next. But which one was the best? I like Death Row. I thought Suge did a good job narrating that from being where he was at. I thought that producer did a good job, but that's me because I know that story. Uh, but I just want y'all to put in the comment sections which one y'all think would be the best and which one would y'all would like to see to be the next one. Uh, but yeah, I like those series that's running on, on, the, on, on BET. Um, repeat the question. <laughs> uh, DMX selling car to him. Sold a car to me. So this was, I remember me and the Rillas, uh, went and took the, and delivered the car. My boy at D's Auto Bodies, uh, paint shop. I'll try to get some pictures from D. Uh, but D Auto Bodies paint shop, uh, he did the, painted the dog and all of that on the paint for me. But, uh, Lillard, when he came up and was hanging out with us trying to buy some new, okay, y'all don't like the word buy, assign the rights to Snoop to Def Jam. Uh, he came up and he asked me, said, Red, you know, Suge got all those cars you always bragging about. And man, DMX loves Suge Knight, and he would love to own one of those cars. So I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I can go get, you know, find one for you. And so Shook told me, yeah, Reg, go ahead, you know, sell in the 64 Chevy. And so Def Jam bought the car from us for $100,000. The only thing we did was we had the dog, and a picture of one of DMX's favorite dogs, put on it, on the trunk. And that nigga, <laughs> he was riding around New York with low loads in a 64 Chevy that Def, Def Jam bought for him as like a bonus present for him. And uh, he had some problems with the car. I remember he called me one time, stuck in the middle of traffic. Man, the car cut off on me, the, the hydraulics are played out and going off and shit. So I had him, uh, Jaru, he also did one for Jaru, but he did a 60, uh, a Lincoln with the suicide doors at these as well that I got for, for Jaru. But anyway, uh, but yeah, DMX uh, got a little load that was shook and, uh, and Def Jam bought it for 100 G's and gave it to uh, DMX as a uh, bonus, just something, an appreciation of one of the show cars. I remember delivering it to him. He was at a video shoot, not a video shoot, photo shoot. And the realist went with me and I remember that was the craziest shit I ever saw. It looked like he had blood or something all over his body. And it was dripped over and they were taking pictures of it and all that. And I was, but that nigga went and jumped in the car. He was like a sissy in a candy shop when he got, he saw that car and saw that car. And uh, he was real happy and he was very appreciative. Dio was cool. He was a little crazy. He ain't got no regular brother, but he was cool. I remember one time seeing Dio Max was coming from visiting Shug at LEX. And he was walking down the center of the the, the, the the freeway. I mean, you know, the street, you know, with the, the ramps and where you be getting off. Yeah. And Realist, I think, or whoever was with me, was, I'm sure it was Realist. Like, man, that, that, that DMX. DMX walking in the middle of the street, Red. Nigga had to been doing something on the plane. Like, X, man, come on. What you doing, man? Oh, man, fucking car service, they limo ain't, they ain't, they ain't here to pick me up. Well, come on, jump in the car with us, man. We'll take you wherever. No, no, fuck that, I'm walking. Nigga, X, you can't be walking down the middle of the airport in the streets with all this traffic. Get your ass in the car 
And he jumped in the car with us. And we took him, I think, down to the hill by that time. We found the limo and got him in his car and stuff. But that nigga was by himself, mad, and just walking in the middle of the street at the airport. All that traffic. But, but X was a fool. Rest in peace, DMX. Yeah. In our interview with Swoop G, he talked about going to House of Blues with him and that you were there and stuff. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. We, I told you, we was on Def Jam nuts for a minute, you know, because they were hot. Yeah, yeah. Def Jam was hot in 98, 99, yeah. 2000. Delvin Rough Riders was, mm -hmm. Master P had even fizzled out. Yeah. You know, my boy Lil Flip, I love Lil Flip in Houston when they were, South was getting their stuff going. But that's who was hot. Was Def Jam, East Coast, that got it back. And uh, so it was at the house, they was at the House of Blues. Even my boy Tretch and Naughty by Nature was even hot. They were, they were doing shows. I went a couple of times and watched them do shows at the House of Blues. They were the first group that I ever saw. Because back then, even if y'all look at Death Row, uh, 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 the video, I always had niggas all on the stage and stuff. You go and see Tretch and Naughty by Nature, just those two and the DJ on the, on, on the stage. Used to love that about them. Cause I used to hate going to rap concerts or, you know, cause yeah, you gotta remember, like I said, we were always in these small vineyards and a hundred niggas on the stage shaking their hand. Uh, yeah, hated that. But uh, E-40 was big for that. He have a whole bunch of people on his uh, stage. But I love E-40 shows. Y'all ever get to go see an E-40 show in a, in a small club? Forty Water give a nice club. Quick does a good job on jumping off stages and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, DMX was there. He was throwing love because you know, like I told you, me and DMX had developed a relationship from the car, mainly because of Leo and Kevin Lyles. And um, yeah, uh, we saw us in the house, you know, because Swoop G always had that Death Row Chronic 2000 jacket on. And his chain, that nigga, he wore that chain and showed that chain like it was. It was his pride and joy. And Swoop was wow, you know, nigga was in your face type dude. He was hyper, he was younger. Swoop was Swoop, my nigga. And he was got all in, pop, you know. And niggas, even though Snoop and them wasn't loving Death Row and all of that, they, and you people wasn't loving, you know, the, the fans wasn't loving Death Row like y'all used to. The artists still did. Mm -hmm. And they would give the respect, especially being in LA. Yeah. Okay. When you guys were giving them or, or selling them the car and all that stuff, was it to try to get him to work with the artists? Like, or was it just on some, like, we're just going to have a good rapport with them in case something ever happens? The relationship was dealt dealt with the money and everything was really dealt with with Leo Corn. Okay. Leo made it happen. Leo was surprising me with a gift. Mm -hmm. Only reason I probably met DMX that day at the photo shoot, because I was delivering it to him. Yes. Uh, I'm sure we talked about it, but I had developed a great relationship with Wa and, uh, and Ja, mm -hmm. who had DMX. That's the owners of Rough Riders. We used to call each other when each other went to the, each other town. Y'all don't know what that means, then fuck you, you don't need to know. But as soon as they called in LA, Red, what's up? All right, we'll meet y'all. All right, we're in New Jersey. All right, we'll meet y'all alone. That's the type of relationship we had with Rough Riders. With Root Wide, Ja. And then I even eventually hooked them up with Suge, and, and they even got cool. But those niggas was solid. Great relationship with them.